Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. Work programs are underway in Finland and Canada. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol ADD, on Frankfurt symbol 82A1, and the OTCQB symbol ASDZF. Please visit our website arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Eric Haddock, CEO and President of InsideTrack.com and InsideTrackTrading.com. Welcome back to the show, Eric. Oh, thanks for having me back, Jim. Eric, the U.S. Fed latest meeting, they said they weren't going to raise rates for the rest of the year, maybe once next year, what does that tell us what's going on? Well, it certainly is an abrupt shift from three months ago or four months ago, and they were already talking about two more rate hikes in, in 2019. But I think that it's uh, another case of fundamentals uh, kind of confirming what the technicals and cycles had uh, already been telling you. Uh, and, and that applies to several different arenas from, uh, from the dollar to stocks to, um, even some critical bond cycles that were, um, pretending as a secondary bottom in early March. So I think it's going to have a, a prolonged impact. Uh, it, you know, it is all about perception. But uh, in the last couple of months, traders' perception has certainly shifted, done a 180 where the Fed and interest rates are concerned. And, and I think this is going to give, um, it's already confirming what the stock market has been showing for the last three months. Um, but also, I think it's setting the stage for the dollar to see a decent sell-off. Why would that be? Well, as I said, it's, it's something where I think it's fundamentals that are starting to corroborate what technicals and, and cycles have already been indicating. And you look at the dollar from a, a bit longer term perspective, uh, it, it has a very consistent uh, about three and a quarter year cycle. Uh, most consistently, it's like a 38 to 40 month cycle. And, uh, that, that cycle was projecting a, uh, six to 12 month peak for November, December of last year, uh, which the dollar has, uh, held that peak since then and projects the next six to 12 month low, most likely in the third quarter of this year. So it's not a, a major dollar sell off that I'm talking about. But it could be a pretty significant uh, three to six month sell off. And now, when you get, uh, you know, up until uh, late last year, it was uh, increasing interest rates and rates that were increasing faster than most uh, of the global competitors for for capital. Uh, that was keeping the dollar positive and and pushing it higher. And now all of a sudden you've removed that, that factor. And it's usually not the removal of just one factor, but it's a cumulative effect of, of multiple things shifting. And then you get to that, uh, that straw that breaks the camel's back, so to speak, uh, which might be, uh, a little bit more of, uh, trade resolution in the, in the coming weeks. Uh, you've taken a couple bullish dollar factors off the table over the last couple months. And now one of the remaining ones, the, the trade disputes where, uh, you know, through a good part of last year, Chinese let the yuan, uh, really depreciate, which helps their cause in, in trade, um, trade com- competition. And dollar strengthened, really, the, the dollar bottomed last year uh, almost in lockstep with when the steel and aluminum tariffs were issued in March of, of 2018. And uh, and the dollar 
rallied from there into December before plateauing, but you've already seen a few key foreign currencies bottom out and start to undergo some serious advances uh, without the dollar index really reflecting that yet. I think that it's just going to take one more uh, one more bullish dollar factor being taken off the table that all of a sudden now it's like yanking out the the floor from underneath the dollar on an intermediate basis. You know, I'm not talking about some major crash or anything, but uh, from what we've seen the last three to six months, I think that the dollar is primed for a a good sell-off in the second quarter. Where will people uh, put their uh, currency investments if the U.S. dollar is coming down? Well, that's another uh, correlative and, and corroborating factor that I see, uh, and the answer to that question is is multifold. Um, one place I think is is still more money flowing into gold, and and if you look at uh, the dollar uh, basis gold or vice versa. That relationship start, turned back in August of last year, and then uh, gold hit a secondary low in November, just as the dollar was heading into a peak. And it's another one of those factors where gold has been uh, advancing since then, even though the dollar hasn't uh, sold off that much. But I think that the April through June period is when gold will have another uh, another golden opportunity to to see another burst of upside and gold has really been adhering very closely to weekly and monthly cycles that were laid out back in early 2018 i talked about how the next uh cycle peak uh in a sequence of uh progressive peaks so not something that uh, ushers in a um major downtrend, but one that just sets a an initial high in 2019 would come into play in late February, early March, uh, usher in some consolidation, and then a more important peak in June, July of 2019, but with a pretty significant rally in between. So I think if gold and silver can uh, see some additional consolidation, silver and uh, some other metals are arguing for a a little bit lower low within this congestion phase in early April. And from there, I think, is when you'll see um, gold have the opportunity to see another up leg. And it wouldn't be surprised, it wouldn't surprise me at all if this time it's dollar selling that really helps spur that move in gold. But I've also done some recent reports on cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, and I think you could also see some money flow into them during um, during that dollar selling. We'll have more with Eric Haddock right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the pink symbol ABN AF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern B.C. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Writers, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Eric Haddock. Eric, uh, going back to cryptocurrencies, uh, is it just Bitcoin or is it the, the few surviving ones? I think it's, it will be the few surviving ones, uh, that, that if we see some dollar selling as I expect, that all of your anti-dollar options will, uh, will gain from that. So you've got, 
your your hard hard currency metal advocates who will benefit from it, but I think also your digital cryptocurrency um, aficionados will also see some some life breathed back into um, the cryptocurrency arena uh, for at least a couple months. I've got some upside targets that I've discussed in Bitcoin. In fact, I have a couple of um, reports that that I'd be happy to send to any of your listeners, but the first one I published on December 14th, and it was called Currency Wars um, and Cryptos, and explained why I thought that mid-December was going to be a major bottom and and why Bitcoin had uh, really completed a whole bubble and bursting scenario and come right back to a, a major point of equilibrium. And from there, it would start to build a bottoming phase. Uh, and then last week, I, uh, I issued a follow-up to that, uh, Currency Wars and Cryptos Part 2, that talked about how uh, Bitcoin was now ready for uh, a little bit more sustained advance, but that it had two critical triggers that still needed to be activated on a technical price uh, basis that we haven't seen yet. And I think once they're tripped, that will be the uh, kind of the starting pistol being fired for a a bit more accelerated advance. So there still are some confirming signals that need to be uh, triggered, but um, several factors are starting to turn more positive in Bitcoin and setting up these um, upside targets. Is it because uh, millennials are are more familiar with computers and Bitcoin and uh, don't really know a lot about traditional investments like gold? I think it's a lot of factors. That is certainly one of them. Uh, moving around cryptocurrency is also a lot easier than moving around gold, too. And, you know, even your hard money advocates, while, while gold, uh, certainly has more credibility and stability, you can also look at hundreds of years of, uh, attempts to have a, a gold-based currency, and it's Absolutely, you know, more stable and legitimate and accountable currency, but there's also great challenges with it that, um, that seem to doom it each time after, after a certain period of time. And one of those is, uh, portability and transportability and, um, and liquidity. And so I think certainly the, the digital aspect is, is something that bodes well for cryptocurrency, uh, as well as a, an overall distrust of, uh, the powers that be and the decentralized nature of cryptos, even more so than, than metals, uh, is a big appeal. We'll have more with Eric Haddock right after the break. Hi, I'm Douglas Mason, President and CEO of Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp, RMO on the TSX Venture Exchange. Rainy Mountain Royalty Corp is a Canadian-based mineral exploration project generator. The company currently holds multiple property interests in Ontario with joint venture partners and is seeking further joint venture partners for other drill-ready properties in our portfolio. For more information, please visit our website at rmroyalty.com or call me at 604-922-2030. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Eric Haddock. Eric, were you surprised that crude oil stayed relatively strong over the winter when usually, traditionally, it drops in value? Um, I, I don't... Uh, look too closely at some of those seasonalities other than just a general, um, overview. And when, when crude saw multi-month, multi-week, and multi-year cycles top in late September, early October, uh, that was really more what I was watching. And the, the magnitude of the drop it had into late December, uh, you know, from a practical standpoint, 
pretty much meant there there wasn't much more downside to go. So even a recovery, when you look at at it compared to September of October last year, uh, is still very weak, relatively speaking. So it's it's more a factor of what price action did in in the fourth quarter of last year that it pretty much had to have a recovery from there just to get back to its uh, point of equilibrium. That the, the as it always does, the pendulum swung too far. Uh, it overextended to the downside along with equities. There was that factor also weighing on on crude, and then when things um, came back to a little bit more sense of normalcy, then you see a recovery. So it's it's really not that surprising at all. Mm-hmm. So where's it going from here? Uh, on a on an intermediate basis, I've been looking for the energy markets to set a, a two to four week peak in late March, early April. But I think that the recovery could continue uh, through the second quarter and into some more significant cycles I have a little bit farther out in 2019. Eric, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks for having me back, Jim. My pleasure. My guest has been Eric Haddock, CEO and President of InsideTrack.com and InsideTrackTrading.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. If you have any questions for Eric or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com Radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.